This video addresses the inspection and repair of the Watts 774 and 774 DCDA backflow prevention assemblies, sizes 8 through 12 inch. Before beginning any work, please familiarize yourself with these procedures to avoid harming yourself or damaging the valve. A copy of these instructions, as well as specification sheets, repair kit ordering information, and additional product resources can be found online at watts.com. To inspect your backflow assembly, you'll need a socket wrench, a 3 8 inch nut driver, and an FDA approved lubricant. To begin your inspection, shut down the water supply by slowly closing both the outlet and inlet shutoff valves. Relieve any air or water pressure trapped within the system by slowly opening the number 2, number 3, and number 4 test cocks. Disconnect the two bolts connecting the groove coupler. Once both pieces of the coupler have been safely set aside, remove the rubber gasket and lid to access the number one and number two cam check assemblies. Inside the assembly, you'll observe two checks differentiated as the number one and number two respectively. The number one check, which should always be removed first, can be disconnected by unscrewing the four nuts holding it into place. Once the nuts have been removed, wiggle the check free and carefully lift it through the valve opening. Collect all loose nuts and washers and set them aside. Remove the number two check by unscrewing the four bolts connecting it to the valve body. In doing so, be careful not to unscrew the two bolts linking the center line access bar to the check. With the bolts disconnected, rotate the check as shown using the center line access bar to position it for removal. With the unit correctly positioned, carefully lift it through the access port. Collect any loose bolts or washers and set them aside. To open the number two check, you'll first need to release the tension holding the clapper shut. Locate the two cam arm torsion springs. With a 3 8 inch nut driver placed over the torsion spring, move the spring away and around the retaining bracket to release the tension. Do the same with the second spring and the cam arm will open with no tension. Clean the check with water to remove any dirt or debris. Thoroughly dry the unit before proceeding with the inspection. Oftentimes, damage or deeply embedded debris may be invisible to the naked eye and can only be detected by close examination and touch. Inspect the check body, the clapper, the seating area, the rubber sealing disc, O-ring, and any additional check components for dirt, deeply embedded debris, or nicks and cuts. Replace if necessary. For closer examination of the disc, the disc retainer can be removed by placing two bolts opposite one another and loosening the retainer with a large screwdriver placed between them. If one side of the disc has been cut, it can be removed and reinstalled in reverse in lieu of ordering a replacement. If both sides are damaged, it should be replaced. Rethread the retainer plate and tighten. With the check cleaned and repaired, replace the torsion springs. Prepare the checks for reinstallation by cleaning the O-ring groove and thoroughly lubricating the O-ring with an FDA-approved lubricant. Lubricant should help to keep the O-ring in place during reinstallation. Begin rebuilding the assembly by reinstalling the number 2 check as shown. The number 2 check should always be replaced first, followed by the number 1. With the check in place, evenly re-thread the bolts, being careful not to over-tighten. If the O-ring should happen to become dislodged during reinstallation, remove the check from the assembly and refit it into the O-ring groove. Reinstall the number 1 check re-threading the nuts evenly to ensure a firm, tight seal. Place the rubber gasket around the valve access port. Reinstall the lid and carefully move the gasket into place. 
flush with the edge of the lid. The coupler should be reinstalled around the gasket and lid, tightening the bolts evenly with a socket wrench until the coupler makes even pad-to-pad -pad contact. With the gasket in place, restart the system by slowly opening the inlet shutoff valve, closing the number 2, number 3, and number 4 test cocks and opening the outlet. For more information on local startup and testing procedures, consult your local municipality or manufacturer's representative.